Question 1. Rotational motion. Brad has a job at a construction site. He often uses power tools on the site. A handheld circular saw contains a disc-shaped blade that spins rapidly to cut through wood. The axle is fixed through the center of the blade, you'd hope anyway, an electric motor makes the axle spin, and this in turn makes the blade spin. And we've got a lovely diagram right there. In case you have never seen one of these before, if you've never seen one of these before, um, maybe you should be worried about things a little bit more than your physics exam. Uh, you should get out more. Try building something. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, A. When operated at full speed with no load, the blade rotates at 4,500 revolutions per minute. 4,500 RPM. Uh, show that the angular velocity of the blade, angular velocity, remember, is omega, is 471 radians per second. Okay, so angular velocity is uh, converted from uh, a frequency measurement by 2 pi f. Uh, and uh, we need to know f frequency is the amount of uh, revolutions per second. But we have this in the revolutions per minute. So what we have to do is divide that by 60 because there are 60 at wall. Yeah, no, that's per minute, yes. 60 seconds in a minute. I thought it was going to be hour, in which case we would have to divide by 3,600. Um, that gives us uh, 75 hertz. And then we substitute 75 hertz into our 2 pi f. And so 2 pi uh, times 75 will give us a frequency, angular frequency, or angular, sorry, angular velocity, in this case, uh, of 471 radians per second. Okay, moving on to B. The rotational inertia of the blade is 1.28 times 10 to the negative 3. Sorry, I drew through that. Kilogram meters squared. It takes 0 0.12 seconds for the motor to uh, accelerate the blade from rest up to full speed. So there's our time. There is our rotational inertia. Uh, and accelerating from rest up to full speed. So from rest means the initial angular velocity equals zero radians per second, uh, and full speed, we don't know what that is. Um, we might have to calculate that later. Calculate the average power provided by the motor during this time. Okay, this is a goodie. Um, there's a number of ways we could approach this, but power in itself is always a measure of energy used or converted or work done perhaps over time. Okay, so now um, it's just a matter of finding out what the... Uh, oh, we're told actually, aren't we? Some more information back here. Um, we've got that final angular velocity of the blade is 471 radians per second. Um, that's useful. and. I should, we should have known because this was a show question which usually means you're taking information that you've shown down to the next question. So um, let's, let's, let's add that in there as well. So we've got initial and we've also got that final angular velocity of 471 radians per second. Um, with the inertia, with the time, um, the time will factor in down here. But with the uh, inertia and with the final angular velocity, I suspect that we can use the kinetic energy uh, formula to to uh, work out the kinetic energy that has to be um, given to this blade. Um, to to um, when you're bringing it up to speed, so you're giving it energy that's coming from electrical energy, and um, all of that energy is transferred once it finishes accelerating um, uh, at the end of that time. So all of the energy will be the kinetic energy. Um, so that is half, instead of remember in, in uh, non-rotational it's half mv squared but inertia is the uh, equivalent for mass, rotational equivalent and v squared is going to be our omega, our final velocity squared. Um, half mv squared but half i omega squared and that's divided by our time which was 0 0.12 seconds. When we substitute all of that in, 
um, we end up with a power of 1,108 watts. Watt is a unit of power. That old gag is fantastic. C. When the saw is cutting through some wood, the blade slows down to a steady speed. So steady speed, that's useful. Explain how forces acting on the blade keep it rotating at a steady speed. In your answer you should state what forces act on the blade, so that's one part, and compare the relative sizes of the forces. This is, this is too much, it's giving us too much information, um, making it almost too easy. No, I shouldn't say that. Um, because it's not obvious if you're not used to these things. That's what teachers often forget. Um, so back to the back to what we're dealing with. Explain how the forces acting on the blade keep it rotating at a steady speed. So first part, what forces act on the blade? Well, there is the um, there is the force of the motor that's accelerating it, or um, or the thrust force, if you like. Um, this is a little bit strange, to be honest, because. When we're dealing with rotational, you'd expect it to be asking about torque. So let's talk about torque. Um, yes, let's talk about torque. There we go. Hard to say differently if you're a mumbler like I am, but hopefully that's clear enough. So um, the motor is providing a thrust force, and that's acting along the axle um, at, at the radius of the axle. Uh, L E E L. That looks better. Um, might be wrong. Anyway, doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about. Um, thrust, and that that leads to a torque coming from there. There is also a force uh, applied at the um, extreme radius of the blade, but that's in the opposite direction. Um, it's, oh, this is assuming oh, it is cutting through some wood, so it is uh, cutting through some wood. You've got the radius of the blade, you'll have um, a, a, a torque due to that. Um, a force applied at the radius of the blade, which leads to a torque. There'll also be uh, friction. I don't know if, um, if they're expecting that, but you'll have friction. Um, friction force, and the friction not just from the blade going through the wood, um, but there'll be friction on the axle as well. Um, axle, axle, no, that doesn't look right. Um, so friction on the axle leading to uh, a further torque. Now um, the part that they, that's, that's what the forces act on the blade. The relative size of the forces, I don't know if we can get too specific, but we can definitely say that if it's a steady speed, these, these forces leading to torques which oppose are equal and opposite to um, the thrust force of the motor, and that's that's all that it's really getting at. Um, so uh, now there's there's something just a little bit tricky here we have to remember. Um, I'm not sure if I said forces or torques, but the torques going are going to be equal and opposite. That doesn't mean the forces will, because the uh, the force on the blade that is providing a torque will be acting at a much greater radius. So the radius of the thrust and the friction are both small um, uh, radiuses, radii, and therefore the forces will be larger. Did I say that right before? Yes. So because force, the torques have to be equal. So the thrust torque and the friction torque, if you like, which is not quite um, technical language, but you get the idea. The, uh, um, because of the small radius, the thrust has to be greater than the large radius um, friction. Okay, I don't think they're interested in the friction of the actual axle, but it's probably worth mentioning. Okay. Um, yeah, and as I was saying, because it's force times the radius and force times the radius, for them to both be the same, while well, one has a greater radius, that means the other one have, has to, uh, the torque of the force will be smaller, and when the radius is smaller, the force will be greater to make it balance up. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Oh, was that the end? That can't be the end. Let's pause it and see what. We'll see if this other one appears somewhere here. I'm sure I had more. Nope, that is the end apparently. Oh, very good.